it's been a long road, but they're finally going to meet up in this issue. I promise, today on Comicology. So this episode is going to work a little bit different than the other episodes. Um, first of all, the norm, the Namor story is going to come before the Human Torch story. And uh, second of all, they're going to both happen in sequence. We're doing both stories in one episode. It's double feature time. Yay. So this story in its entirety follows the events of what is essentially the first ever meeting between the Human Torch and the Submariner. Uh, it's a little clash. It's not the full fight, but it's a little clash. It's like the events that lead up to it. Now, the interesting thing about these two stories, I'm going to read them back to back, but they actually show the same events, but from two different perspectives, from uh, the perspective of both heroes. It's actually kind of interesting to see, so keep an eye out for the bits of continuity that like match up. So without further ado, let's get into it. The story begins with the Submariner on top of his fortress in the Statue of Liberty. He's brooding about what Betty Dean had said about the power of the Human Torch. But again, he just scoffs at the prospect of being defeated. Namor decides again to commit more revenge on humanity, and so he goes to the naval yard and steals a depth charge. He buries it under the river and sets it off, which causes a huge explosion. As a result, deep underneath the Hudson River, a tunnel collapses, letting all the water flow into the underground. It's now certain that the Submariner is back to cause more carnage, and so the emergency authorities spring into action. Next, the ruthless Namor has this amazing idea of going to the zoo and just releasing all of the animals. He starts off with the lions, which are happy to be free, then they immediately start eating people. Holy crap, that's insane! He let those animals free, and you know it, you could just tell. He let them free because he can totally tell what it's like to be caged. It's awesome. I love it. Next, he lets out the snakes, and then the elephants, and uh, they are also happy to be free and join in the rampage. However, there is a child lost in the scramble and the chaos, and one of the massive elephants is about to smash it. So Namor heroically jumps in to save the child. He lifts the elephant up and then tosses it like it was nothing. Then he collects the child and flies off to a hospital where he passes it off to one of the nurses. So this probably needs to be explained. Namor hates humanity, but Namor has limits. In fact, Namor doesn't really hate humanity. Um, how do I put this? He's indifferent to humanity. You understand? He's indifferent to humanity and we find that uh, personally disgusting uh, because humanity is built all on these like social relationships. Namor doesn't care about any of that. And so he's automatically distrustful and hateful and spiteful, but he's indifferent. What Namor hates is our arrogance and our intolerance. Think of it this way. Namor is like a purely chaotic force, right? but he is not without honor. He saves this child because he understands that this child is pretty much innocent. Uh, the child has done no wrong. The child cannot do wrong. It's too young to do wrong. So Namor is not above, you know, sacrificing his time and energy to make sure that the, the child is safe. It's actually this incredible, extraordinary trait that Namor has where he is chaotic, but he's not without honor. And I'm really happy that it was included in this story. Then again, immediately after saving the child, he goes downtown to one of the Manhattan bridges and just knocks it down. And who knows how many kids were probably crossing it at the time. That's when suddenly, out of nowhere, the Human Torch comes flying into frame. And he's just about had enough of the Submariner's crap. And he's ready to throw down with all his might. The Submariner immediately retaliates by throwing a heavy girder on him. But the torch just melts it into nothing and returns the favor with some red-hot flames of his own. I can't believe it. Like, for the first time, we finally have both these characters sharing a page. It's a crossover event. And it's one of the first crossover events to ever happen in comic books. So, like, let that sink in. 
Like, this is a moment in history, you know? This is a part of our culture. Now it's water versus fire as the torch tries to ignite the Submariner, who desperately tries to douse the flames with his water power. Then suddenly he becomes overwhelmed and dives into the ocean for a quick escape. So the Human Torch can't technically dive into water. He can't go into the ocean at all. For obvious reasons, he would douse his flames. Uh, but is this a quick escape for Namor? Uh, he seemed almost seemingly scared, maybe overwhelmed? Hmm, has Namor finally met his match? So this is the end of the first story, but no, we are not stopping. We are going immediately into the second story. They happen sequentially in this issue. This story begins with the Torch flying through New York looking for the Submariner. He's having trouble finding him, however, and decides to ask a few of his fellow officers if they've heard anything over the radio. They tell him that he's wanted back at the station to talk to the chief. He returns to the station and the police chief is furious that the Torch hasn't captured the Submariner yet. Then suddenly, news from Namor's rampage. The elevated track has fallen and the Torch flies off to find the scene. You see how these things are being pieced together? Huh? It's not bad as far as continuity is concerned. Remember, this is one of the first times in history that this has happened, so enjoy the experience. Uh, it's a landmark for the medium, it really is. The torch arrives at the elevated, but it's already been destroyed. He uses his fire powers to weld things back together as best as he can and rescue whatever civilians are still alive, but he ultimately fails to find Namor. That's when Betty Dean comes into play. She flags him down and tries to rouse his sympathies for the Submariner, explaining that he isn't all bad, but just misunderstood. The Torch just isn't having any of it and decides to follow his orders and capture Namor. Then suddenly there's a bulletin on the radio and the Human Torch rushes off to the Empire State Building. He arrives just in time to see the needle come crashing into the ground. He immediately jumps into action using his fire powers to melt it down and rescue any civilians trapped underneath. But it seems, once again, he's just missed the Submariner. He quickly moved on. It isn't hard to find him, however, when the torch flies up to the top of the building and notices immediately that there's more chaos happening at the zoo across town. He flies over to investigate only to find all the animals have been released. He uses his flames to create a wall of heat which corrals the animals back into their cages and saves the guards from being eaten. However, once again, he's just missed the Submariner who has already left. So, just a warning. Uh, <laughs> as serious as this has been, this next part's just a little comical. Suddenly, a monkey appears out of nowhere and tosses the torch across the zoo. Luckily, his flames break his fall, and he's able to get back at the monkey by tossing a fireball right in his face. Suddenly monkeys, suddenly screaming. Yeah, I contemplated skipping that whole part, but then I thought, hey, you know, this story actually kind of needs some levity. After wrecking that monkey, Betty shows up and explains to the Torch that the Submariner has settled at the George Washington Bridge, and he's going to tear it down unless he's stopped. They meet again as we see the same fight from the previous issue, but from the opposite angle. Then the comic book ends with this final panel advertising the next issue where they truly clash. Fire versus water in a fight to the finish. Wow, that one was intense. I like almost can't even take any more of this. Like, the chaos is both awesome and kind of unnerving. Uh, especially since I don't want them to fight. I like both characters. But I guess that's like the whole point of the story. The whole thing is about this huge unnecessary conflict. You know, like everybody thinks the Torch is a hero when in actuality he's just this crazy science experiment gone wrong. And everybody thinks Namor is a monster when in actuality he's just this misunderstood ancient being. It's like this giant massive fight that encompasses all of New York between these two beings that society desperately wants to kill each other. And it's all just basically for the benefit of the humans caught in between, uh, for their welfare and their amusement. It's almost tragic that they have to fight at all. But fight they will in the next issue. I know, you'll be there. Oh, I know you'll be there. You're not going anywhere. 
Yeah, you're gonna see it. This is coming tomorrow, too. So you have no excuse. Be there, be square.